Hi, I'm David the Bruce. This is Steal This Show, where we show all things in the public domain. And if you've been watching our last few episodes, you know that we've been featuring Annie Oakley, starring Gail Davis, which slipped into the public domain some time ago. But uh, it's an important television show. So important that uh, it, just, it just begs description. Imagine, in the year 1954, being a woman, what that must have been like. We had come out of the World War II era where women were encouraged to go to work, you know, on the war front to uh, uh, give, give their labor to the efforts to defeat Adolf Hitler. Rosie the Riveter, yeah, women could work, but then suddenly after World War II, they were all unemployed. They had to give up their jobs for the men coming home so that they could be employed. And then if that wasn't enough, there were so many television shows that really uh, stressed the idea of the woman in the house, whether it be the later the Donna Reed show or I Love Lucy, always in the home, wasn't working, but the, dad, you know, but the father was or the husband was. It was... Um, uh, the, women were uh, being uh, uh, subordinated and closed in and trapped into just one thing. I mean, as precious as motherhood can be, certainly that isn't all of what a woman is. Absolutely not. As good a cook as a woman can be. Th that can't be the total of what she is, in addition to childbirth and child raising. Women have dreams. So, in 1954, when this series came out, here was a single female, not attached, with a job, bringing in bad guys, bringing down bad guys. This was an incredible show, and it meant so much to so many. It affected so many young women's lives, and that's why I'm so happy to be showing this. On another uh, show, uh, in Amuse, I have um, done a whole um, uh, biography of Gail Davis, who plays um, Annie Oakley, and you should see it. And, uh, and in still an, another program, I'm featuring the real-life Annie Oakley. But that's at another time. Right now, let's watch. Oh, and what I'm doing in this, I'm showing you the best of her series. The very best. So let's take a look. And re remember to look at the factoids on the side. I'm David the Bruce. with her hard riding. and circus stunts. Gosh, Mr. Calvert, I'm sorry. I'm and sorry. ruining my harness. But, Mr. Calvert, the chair slipped and I sort of just caught myself. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Tag Oakley, playing when I hired you to clean and polish the saddles and other gear. But I have, Mr. Calvert, I have. Sure. Look, I did this one, and this one, and that one over there. What the Take hell? It. Here. Gee, thanks a lot. Here's another 15 cents for doing a nice job. Gee, you are only joshing. Of course. Say, are there any other chores you want me to do, like uh, cleaning up the yard or something? The yard? Uh -huh. Are you admitting you didn't do a good job yesterday cleaning up the yard? Oh, that's right, I did do yesterday. Of course it was a good job. Do you want me to whitewash your stalls? It's worth 50 cents, but I'll do it for a quarter. Some other time, Tag. Gee, thanks a lot, Mr. Calvert. That's real nice of you. Hi, 
Hi, Johnny. Hi, Jack. How'd you make out today? Not too good. I chopped wood for Mrs. Perkins, and all I got was ten cents and splinters in both hands. Gosh, so far I made five dollars and thirty-five cents, enough to go to the county fair. Gee, you're lucky. All I was able to make was a dollar and four cents. I guess I won't be able to go with you like we planned, Tag. Gosh, that's too bad. You know, it's getting harder and harder to make an honest nickel. What we need in this country is more paying chores for us kids. I guess you're right. Hey, that's my Uncle Joe. Hey, Calvert. Where are you going, Uncle Joe? Battle Hill, Johnny. Can I go with you? Hello, Dixon. Hello, you call Calvert. me? Yes, I... Looks like I need a new hub and a couple of new spokes. You can have it ready for me by the time I get back from Saddle Hill. I don't see why not. Good. Say, um, I'm going to need a horse. Well, take mine. He needs a little exercise. Well, thanks. Hold it, Tag. that shot. Mr. Dixon, he saved me from that rattler, Annie. It was crawling right for Tag when Uncle Joe grabbed Mr. Calvert's gun and bang, he got it. And from 25 feet away. You couldn't have done better, Annie. He shot right from the hip. Thought you didn't know how to use a gun, Joe. Never saw you wear one. Well, uh, that is the uh, beginning of his luck, I suppose. You better get back to the ranch soon, Johnny. You ever seen your uncle use a gun before, Johnny? No, I haven't. You won't even keep one around the ranch. Something on your mind about Joe? He's 25 feet away and he shot from the hip. So? So, when a man who doesn't wear a gun shoots like that, I think it's time to learn a little more about him. Want some water? Nah, I want to go to that county fair. Yeah, it won't be any fun going to the county fair without you. How about Banker Willis? His windows need washing. Nah, he turned me down. Oh, you must have gotten him when he wasn't feeling so good. Come on, I'll go with you. I'm a sharp dealer, Mr. Willis. Sharp and honest, mind you. But in you, I reckon I've met my match. Well, look what you've got. Seventeen fifty is an awful lot of money to pay for a broken pen and ink set. Yes, but that's a genuine antique. Just the same, I calculate I'll be lucky if I break even. Good day, sir. Good day. Holy Toledo. Seventeen dollars and fifty cents for an old busted pen and ink set. We got lots of old stuff up on our attic better than that. You have? Sure. Uncle Joe's been asking me to clean it out. Johnny, we're both going to the county fair. Come on. Hey, Mr. Wayne. Huh? Johnny's got an attic full of junk. I mean, antiques. Oh, he has? Sure. They're at my Uncle Joe's ranch, about five miles from town. The Dixon Ranch. You can't miss it. And you can buy him cheap. Cheap? Is your uncle at home, son? No, sir. But he's been after Johnny to clean him out. Well, I'm heading in that direction anyway. I'll see you boys up there in a little while. Good. Let's get our horses. Yes, I know, but are you checking up on Joe with the state authorities? Mm-hmm. Well, if you ask me, you're wasting your time. Maybe. It's my duty as deputy to see, see if he's, he's a wanted, wanted man. man. We do that very nicely together, don't we? Oh, Lofty, after all, Joe's our friend, and we've got to trust our friends. You know, Annie, being a woman, you sometimes let sentiment blind your better judgment. 
And you, being a man, must always keep your mind open to suspicion. It's my job, Annie. You know that. Oh, well. Oh, Lofty. Maybe you ought to check up on little Johnny, too. He may also be wanted. Ow! It's broken, Ted. Oh, yeah. Well, that ought to make it real anti cute. deputy were slain yesterday and another desperado captured when officers thwarted off an attempted bank robbery today. What'd you say, Johnny? Oh, nothing, Tag. I was just talking to myself. Here's some more antiques. Hey, Johnny, you don't look so good. Are you sick or something? I'll be all right, Tag. Hey, it must be that buyer. Johnny, we haven't got all day. Ah, good morning, sir. And a good morning to you, sir. Permit me to introduce myself. Homer Willoughby, antique dealer. Could I interest you in either any buying or selling? <laughs> <laughs> I'd go on the stage if I could put on the act you do. Well, how'd it work this time? Well, just the same as usual. I invested seventeen fifty, and we're going to have plenty of dividends. Now, here's the layout of the bank. Here's the vault, the cashier's cage, and the office. All right, boys, it's up to you. Get out of there. Anything worth taking, mister? Better enough. Come on, climb down. 
Take off your coat and your hat. took my hat, coat, and Calvert's horse. What happened? He's one of the two outlaws that robbed the bank. I was tracking him. Oh, so that's why he headed me in this direction. He figured you'd recognize his horse and go after me, giving him a chance to make a clean escape. It's pretty slick. You think so? Quite a coincidence you were running into him the way you did. What are you driving at, Lofty? Nothing at all. You better come back with me to the office and make out a full report. I'll be very glad to. Here's your report. You forgot to sign it. Believe me, you're not, Lofty. I had nothing to do with those outlaws. I didn't say you did. No, but that's what you're thinking. Trying to trip me up with all kinds of questions. Even asking that outlaw if he knew me. It's a deputy's job to ask questions, Joe. Not the kind he's asking. Unless he thinks I had a hand in the robbery. I'm not altogether stupid, Lofty. Why don't you come right out and say you think I deliberately drew you away from that other outlaw? You don't really believe that, do you, Lofty? Danny, Lofty, Johnny's got enough money to go to the county fair with me. Ten dollars and fifty cents. Show it to him, Johnny. He got it from the antique buyer. Antique? You mean antique. Huh? Well, anyway, he bought some old things Mr. Dixon wanted cleaned out of his attic. Oh, so that's where you were. I wondered what had become of you. Well, we would have been back sooner, except we met Shorty Davis on the road, and... Hey, who's that guy? An outlaw who held up the bank. Holy Toledo. His partner got away. He tricked Lofty by making Joe change horses with him. Gosh, did they get away with much money? Close to $10,000. Don't you feel well, lad? I'll be all right. Just a little headache. Come on, lad. We'll pick up the rig and go on home. Excuse me. took your time getting back here. Where's the bank money? I ain't got it. Idaho has. Didn't he turn it over to you? I got news for you. Idaho's in jail. What? When you two failed to return here soon enough, I figured something was wrong, so I went back into town and checked. Well, didn't he have the money on him when they grabbed him? No. He must have hid it somewhere. And wherever he hid it, we've got to find it, and we've got to get Idaho out of jail. That's going to take some tall doing. I don't think so, Hardy. It just so happens that among the antiques I've collected, I have a set of skeleton keys that'll open any door. And when the sheriff's young nephew, Tag, is busy selling me some junk, you'll be springing Idaho. Yeah? What about that girl and the deputy? What'll they be doing? They'll be out looking for you. I'll arrange that small detail. Some more inside. Well, that's all right. Uh, take your time. I will. I looked everywhere inside, but this is all I could find, Mr. Willoughby. Well, Tag, they certainly don't look like antiques. However, I'll, uh, I'll give you 50 cents for the lot. Gee, thanks a lot. I'll be seeing you a little later, Miss Willoughby. All right, son. See you later.
see you well enough to fatten the wood box, Johnny. Still got that headache of yours? No, it's worse than that. Much worse. Come on over here and sit down. I need some advice. Sure, Johnny. What's the trouble? Well, suppose you like someone very much. You trusted him with your own life. And then something happened to make you think he was no good. What would you do, Tag? Well, Johnny, that's something a fellow's got to decide for himself. But Annie always says to keep on trusting your friends until you're dead sure about him. But if you think you've got troubles, listen to this. That outlaw, Idaho, broke out of jail a little while ago. And it was all my fault, too. Broke out, huh? Uh-huh. Annie and Lofty are out looking for him now. Very good afternoon to you, Madison, sir. What in the world? Relax, mister. Sorry to have bothered you, mister. We're looking for an escaped elbow. We just thought he might have hidden in your wagon while you were busy someplace else. Oh, I quite understand, miss. I hope you apprehend the rascal. smell the rat? Why should they? But if I'd have been driving as fast as you wanted me to, then that really would have looked suspicious. Well, we don't have to keep on crawling, do we? We're only a mile from the Dixon place. Patience is not only a virtue, but a safeguard. Remember that. Climb in. Uncle Joe. That's right, sir. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Thank you. I don't recall you passing me on the road, Tag. Well, I took a shortcut over here. Oh, I just dropped by to see if the boys had any more antiques. I doubt it. Now, wait a minute. There's an old clock inside if you're interested. Indeed I am, sir. Come with me. Come on, Johnny. Now, this old clock was left to me by my grandfather. There's the buckboard. It's gone. Then Joe Dixon must have found it. Come on. Frankly, I'll be lucky to break even. Hold it. You again. What do you want this time, my shirt? We'll take that bank loot, smart guy. And don't tell us you didn't find it tied under your rig. I didn't. Well, this is an outrage. Shut up. I won't shut up. This is... Hand it over, Dixon. Or you won't live to spend a cent of it. He didn't find it. I did. It's buried out there in the wood pile. Watch him. Why didn't you tell me about this, Johnny? I couldn't tell anybody. I thought that you were mixed up in the robbery. Now, where on earth did you get that idea? In an old trunk, up in the attic. Oh. I got it. Throw your gun away. Far away. Now back up.
right, get out. Pixie, get a whole bushel of carrots for this. <clears throat> what a day. But all this excitement has been too much for me. I, uh, I think I'd better see my doctor. Wait a minute. All you're going to see is the inside of a cell. Just like your two friends here. My friends? Why, why, that's absolutely outrageous. I think you're wrong, Lofty. He stood up to him, let him punch him right in the face. That's right. It's just a cover-up act, Tag. He's really the brains of the outfit. You know, Mr. Willoughby, it's amazing. All of you clever crooks always forget one little detail. You forgot a wagon leaves tracks you can follow. And when we found no one inside, out in the road, we let you think you were absolutely in the clear. All right, all of you, pile in the wagon. It was my first and only crime. And when I learned the deputy had died, I swore I'd never wear a gun again. That deputy was your father, Johnny. I'm not your real uncle. When I got out of prison, I learned that you'd been left with folks who really didn't want you. They let me have you very gladly. You were only four then. I made up my mind that I'd do my best to take your father's place. Well, that's it, Johnny. I don't suppose you'll want to stay with me now. But there's one thing I am certain of. I wasn't the man who shot your father. You must believe that. I do believe you. Uncle Joe. Oh, thanks, Johnny. Hey, quit it, Uncle Joe. You're breaking my ribs. Hey, come on. I won't be much good on the ranch with my ribs busted. Then you're not leaving me. Of course not. Hey, come on, Tag. We better get ready for our trip to the county fair. You bet. I knew we'd make it somehow.